That's falling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome to DIY Dudes. In this video, I'm going to show you how I tile this shower using basic tiling techniques that any beginner can do. Let's get started. All right guys, so I'm here in my shower and I'm gonna walk you through the first phase of the shower tile installation. And honestly, this is probably the most important phase if you wanna get good results for the final product. Um, and that's the, the layout phase. So I've used the laser level. Um, this is the easiest tool for tile installation to determine these layouts and, and various levels. But I've used the laser level to cast a fixed line on this wall, this wall, and this wall. It's at the same level all the way around the shower. And the height of this line, I've determined to be the top of my fourth course of tiles. That's a fixed point that I wanna try and achieve on all three of these walls to have a consistent line of tile courses all the way around the perimeter of the shower. And the reason I'm doing this in advance is every tile installation or every tub or shower or whatever you're working with, is probably gonna have a high and a low point. The shower pans are sometimes designed with them. There's always gonna be one spot that's a little bit higher than the rest. And you need to, to determine what that is and or where that is and account for that with your tile layout, especially for starting off your fixed point. So I've measured down from each of these three points and I've determined that this point here is the least distance from that fixed line to the bottom. And like for example, here is 47 and 5 eighths, here is 48 inches, here is 47 and 7 eighths. So this is the least distance between the two. So I've set that to be the top of the fourth course plus an extra eighth of an inch on the bottom. And I need to modify the starting points of this course and this course to compensate for that height. So for example here, I want my top course to be at 48 inches from the bottom. So I'm gonna to need to add an additional 3 eighths of an inch to the bottom of this course. I've determined my layout um, using full tiles because it's, it's kind of worked out where I have full tiles all the way up and a, a large chunk at the top. Your situation might be a little bit different depending on the height. Each one is gonna be a, a bit situation specific, but this is the uh, a universal concept for determining that, that layout and the consistent course height across your entire shower. So now that I've finalized my height layout, let's talk about the, the tile spacing on the walls. Um, I'm using a rectified porcelain tile. Uh, this thing is 23 and three quarters of an inch long, and I'm gonna use an eighth of an inch gap on either side of this. So. These tiles are actually installed at, uh, check your tiles, because uh, each one's a little bit different, but these are actually going to be installed at one third of an offset. So I've gone through and I've kind of done a few markups on my wall. I'm literally writing on the wall just to try and fit the best layout of tile in here and just see how I can lay out these tiles to minimize the waste and keep all my cuts at a relatively minimal size with the least waste possible. So I'm actually gonna start with a two thirds piece in the bottom, follow it by a full tile, and then drop to a one third piece in the top, and then repeat that pattern all the way up. Um, with my wall spacing, it works out that I can actually reuse all of those cuts for some of the, uh, the end pieces, and I'm actually gonna be, my smallest piece is gonna be about four inches, which is a little bit smaller than I would like, but it's, it's not a big deal because I can use my, my cutoff and it'll allow me to minimize my waste. And at the end of the job, it's gonna look pretty good. So I'm gonna have uh, tiles all the way up the wall and I'm actually gonna use uh, a glass strip in the center and then I'm gonna follow that by another two courses. I've measured this all the way up to the top of the shower, including all of the courses of tiles as well as the height of my glass strip. And I've made sure that my top course is not gonna be a dinky little sliver of tile. It's gonna be almost a full tile. So I'll have to rip a tile at the top, but it will be a nice full looking piece and you're not gonna have any tiny little cuts. All right, so I'm set up outside. I've got my wet tile saw and I'm ready to cut my first tile. 
I'm starting my first course off with a two thirds length piece. So I'm gonna cut one third off of one end of the tile. The cutting setup that I use to cut all my tiles, I've got this rigid seven inch blade uh, meant for cutting wet porcelain tiles. It's a little bit more work than some of the snap cutters, but I find that with this, I usually always get a perfect cut. So with these white tiles, uh, I always mark them with a permanent marker. So I previously figured this out that it was about seven and a half inches I was gonna cut off the one side. Whatever you're using these wet tiles, make sure you use earplugs, these guys are really loud. So this is the cut edge. I'm gonna put it against my first wall. I'm gonna recycle this piece against another wall. And I'm just gonna go ahead and recut every tile like that. All right guys, so I'm ready to mix up my first batch of mortar. I'm using a large tile format uh, mortar mix. This is a lightweight mortar mix specifically meant for vertical surfaces. You can use it on floors as well, but the benefit of this product is it's a non-sag mix. So what that means is you put the, put the mortar up on the wall, put the tile on the wall, and it is not gonna sag, literally. It's gonna be held to the wall like glue. So this is a, a superior product. It costs a little bit more than some of the other ones, but just it's for a few extra dollars on materials, it's gonna go a long way to helping you out during the install. Um, also, whenever you're buying a, a mortar, make sure you get it to match the tile you use, you're using. I'm using a porcelain tile. This is good for porcelain tiles. Not all mortars are created equal, so I'd, I'd recommend spending a couple bucks getting the good stuff. The other thing with this is you gotta make sure you mix it at the right consistency. You're gonna wanna have it finish off almost like a peanut butter consistency. If it's too runny, it's gonna be slopping everywhere. You're gonna end up with a big mess and it's actually not gonna hold the tiles as well. And if it's too dry, it's just gonna dry out quickly and it's gonna be hard to work with. And it's also not gonna hold the tiles as well. So just don't overdo it with the water when you're mixing it. You can always add more water as you go. Um, it's difficult to, uh, to dry it out once it gets a little bit too wet. So I start off with, I got a little bit of water in the bucket already. Just gonna mix up the rest of this bag. I've got a paddle mixer. So you're gonna need a drill with some good power to mix the, uh, the towel mortar. A regular drill probably isn't gonna have the strength to cut through it. See how when I gob it up, it's got really good sticking power. That means it's gonna stick to the wall really well. And to your tiles. All right, so I'm finally ready to get some tiles up on the wall. I've got my mortar mix, my first course cut, and I just wanna quickly go over with you the leveling system I'm gonna use. This is the difference between a DIY job turning out pretty good or a DIY job turning out absolutely horrible. These lash leveling clips allow you to level each tile with the tile adjacent to it. And if you level each tile with the tile adjacent to it, all of your tiles are gonna be at the same level. And it also has an incorporated spacer into the system. So generally, if you use these in combination with a couple of spacers, your job's gonna turn out pretty good. So these pieces actually get embedded into the tile, and then you've got a leveling shim that cuts through and basically pulls the two tiles tight to one another. Um, I'll show you guys up close uh, when I'm actually installing the tiles, but these things are an absolute must have for any novice or pro tiler for that matter. So the key is when you're putting the mortar on the wall, you wanna make sure it's consistent all the way across. You don't want any big gobs because it's gonna make it really hard for you to level out your tiles. Okay, so before I actually throw the tiles up on the wall, um, it's key you have to lightly butter the backs of the tiles. So what that is gonna do is gonna make sure that you've got a good bonding surface over your entire tile. You don't need much, just a really thin skin coat. A 
I've got my line mark marked out where I want this first course to match up to. I'm using the wedges to prop that tile up to get it off the ground at the height that I want. So that I have a uniform first course all the way around the perimeter of the shower. So when you're installing these lash leveling clips, you want to make sure that you've got two clips for every abutting edge. So I've got two here in the corner because I can have a small piece up there. I've got one here because um, that's going to match up with the, uh, the one edge of the tile. And then similarly, I'm going to have three or four along the stretch. It's always a good idea to have more of these than you need. So I've got that all roughly shimmed in place. I'm going to tighten up these uh, lash um, leveling pieces to flatten out the surface straight across. I'm going to make sure I've got a good bond on each tile by kind of vibrating each tile, giving it a little shimmy to make sure the, the mortar gets a good bond. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to make sure as I work my way progressively up the wall, I'm going to make sure everything's level with the with the lash leveling clips. I'm going to make sure I have all my spacers in place to make sure each tile has a one eighth of an inch space between it and the tile adjacent to it. So I got my one third cutoff piece I've recycled from one of my other cuts. I'm going to use that to start this course. Remember, always make sure you put your cut side out to the wall. So it's a bit tough to get the tile on there at first with the leveling clips. You just got to kind of get it stuck to the wall and they get a couple clips right in it right away to tighten the, the tile up to the wall. You want to make sure, because the bottom of these leveling clips are kind of uh, concave, you need to tighten up the leveling system in order to flatten out that concave and get the tile to sit flat against the wall. So you guys can see here that I haven't actually installed any of the leveling clips on the top of this course. The reason being is I'm actually going to install this glass decorative strip uh, to break up the row of tiles. So I'm going to have this glass strip here and then one more full tile uh, with possibly a small cut in it at the top there. Um, these glass strips, you don't actually need to level them. Um, they're pretty thin and delicate, so you got to be extra careful with these. I'll just install this guy on a very thin mortar bed, just uh, rested nicely above the, this course of tiles. Okay, so these guys, um, they've got built-in spacers in between each, each tile. Um, they're spaced out on the mesh that way. But I want to start off with a 1 8 of an inch space on the bottom so it matches all of my spacing. You want to go through and make sure that you don't have any big clumps of mortar here. These guys do not need a lot of mortar. And they're very difficult to clean after if you get too much on there. So go through and just kind of rub each tile in so that it depresses evenly in the mortar bed. All right guys, this is where the high quality mortar comes in. I'm gonna install this last tile while everything else is still wet and the non-sag mortar should allow this tile to stick there without sagging and pushing down the, uh, the glass strip beneath it.
right guys, this wall is done. I think it looks pretty good. Everything's nice and evenly spaced, nice and level. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is go through and give it a once over with the sponge just to get any loose mortar off. It's a lot easier to do it now while everything's still wet rather than wait until it dries. Um, and then I'll probably call it a night and then I'll tackle the two other walls tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove all of the clips in this wall and I'm going to kind of give it a buff and clean as I go. So if you were doing these on the floor, you could literally kick them off and they would break off. You can pull them off just with your hands uh, on the wall. Um, that can be a bit tough. I like to use a pair of pliers. And as I remove these things, I'm going to throw um, the, the levelers into a pile and I'm going to throw the clips into the garbage. Additionally, as you go, I like to use the pliers to remove all the little spacers you would use when setting your tiles. All right, so I've got a section all cleaned up. And I'm going to use a, uh, a scraper to scrape off the surface of the tile to remove any mortar residue. And I'm also going to use this guy to run it uh, carefully through the, the, grout, uh, the grout joints just to remove any mortar that was left behind in the joints. You can see I didn't do a great job cleaning this when I was installing the tiles, but that's all right. I can clean it up now. So just take the floor scraper, run it right along the surface of the tile. You can actually run it in the joint as well. Any mortar that's exposed in the joints, you just want to get it below where your grip line is going to go. All right, so I got this section all cleaned up. Now I'm going to take a, uh, normally I wouldn't do this until it was fully done, but I'm going to take my microfiber cloth. Just give the tile a good buff. You can use that to buff out any little bits of mortar residue. That section is good for grout. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of the wall and then move on to the next like, two exterior walls. So before I lay any tiles on this wall, the first thing I'm gonna do is install my edge strip so I can butt my tiles up to that. 79 and three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna cut one piece, 79 and three quarters of an inch long to extend from the top to the bottom. And then all of my edge tiles are gonna be butted right up to that edge. Okay, perfect. So I've got my edge strip cut. As I set the tiles, I'm gonna mortar this edge in uh, as I go, but just to make sure it's in place for my whole uh, install and not moving around, I'm gonna use a few pan head screws and actually screw it into place prior to laying any tiles. Ready to go, I'm ready to start laying some tiles. So I've got my bottom course all uh, cut and installed. I've got my edge strip installed and ready to go. And I've got my laser level shooting a line straight across the top row of this tile. And it actually wraps around this tile right through the top row of this tile. So I know that my line, my ground lines are gonna be consistent all the way from this first course and extending all the way up. I just have to keep the, uh, keep the level going. Now that I have it set on the bottom, I don't have to worry about it so much as I, as I go up. As long as I keep the tiles at a consistent eighth of an inch spacing, exactly the same as I did on this wall, it should be that same spacing all the way across, nice and level on each course as I go up. So I'm just trying to get this on the wall as quick as I can. I'm doing the best I can. If you guys have any tips or tricks to uh, speed this up, let me know. But I just try and get it on the wall as fast as I can. Do about two rows worth. Okay, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna do uh, two leveling clips per tile edge. Be four along the top and two along the sides. Okay, so I've got everything roughly set. Now I'm gonna add a few leveling clips just to get the tiles synced into place. And then once I have everything roughly synced into place, I'll level out the tiles and make sure the spacing is bang on. So I'm gonna go, my next tile up is gonna be a two thirds offset. So I've got my two-third length and my one-third length cut. 
Um, I'm gonna get these installed and then I'll measure for the cut pieces to fill in the end. So now I'm gonna quickly measure and cut a piece. Cut this at 19 inches. All right, so I've got this course installed and my top row above it is, seems pretty bang on level. And that is only because I did such a good job leveling this first course. The next courses, I shouldn't even have to check. I should just be able to eyeball it as I go up. It only took him like seven hours to lay seven tiles. You know, I'm filming. That's fine. That's falling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Katie. I like to ruin your videos. <laughs> Just having some yeah. fun. As you can see, guys, between the children and my wife, <laughs> it's a great work environment here. So I'm on my last row of glass tiles. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to spread the mortar thin across this, and then I'm going to use a very uh, a narrow sixteenth of an inch gap trowel. I'm gonna go really light with the mortar on here because when I press on this glass tile, I don't want all the mortar to ooze up through the joints. So I'm using the same trowel to get the mortar up onto the wall. Perfect. So this nice hole, I actually have an inch and a half drill bit meant to cut through rectified uh, tile. I definitely recommend getting one of those. It's very cheap and you really need it for doing these, uh, the faucet spits. All right guys, so it's about two days after I've set these tiles. I've already uh, cleaned off all the tiles a couple of times to remove any of the mortar and the spacers and anything I've left behind. And these guys are pretty clean and ready to go. So today's the day I'm gonna grout. So in order to grout, you're gonna need a couple of basic tools. So you're gonna need a grout float, a uh, grouting sponge, a couple of pills of water, and then I'm using a paddle mixer to mix up my grout. And the grout that I'm using, I'm a bit nervous about but I'm using this Ultra Color Plus grout. So this has a very quick set time. So I have about 10 minutes of working time with every batch I mix up before I need to start uh, wiping it off with some fresh clean water. All right, so I got half a bag of grout mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it to the ceiling. I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as I can using my grout float. I'm gonna apply it. I'm just gonna kind of rub it at different angles, 45 degree angles from the grout lines and kind of just push it in everywhere I go. This is all about speed. So just kind of use your grout float as a squeegee. I've got plastic all over the ground because I knew I'd be dropping grout everywhere. That whole thing was about 10 minutes. So here we go, time to start wiping. So kind of wipe with one side switch, clean out the other side. You've got two sides to your sponge. Wipe up the grout with one side, flip, and then get the other side. All right, I'm feeling pretty good. So I've got on this in time. And I'm just gonna work from one side to the other. If I missed any spots at this point, I can touch them up. Or if I'm really worried, I can wait and mix up a little bit more grout when I'm done. Okay, so I've got all the bulk cleanup done. I kind of regrouted anything that was uh, looking a little bit weird with the sponge. So just work the grout joints with the sponge till they're nice and smooth. You don't want to remove too much grout, just kind of wipe everything flush. I'm gonna go clean up my water, probably wipe this wall and ceiling down another two times with cleaner water every time just to get this, uh, the bulk of this dirty water off of it. When it dries, there's always gonna be haze, but when it dries, just kind of buff it clean with a towel and it should polish up uh, nice and clean.
pretty happy with the way everything looks. I'm going to go around with a clean, dry towel and wipe off the tiles uh, just to try and get as much of this residue off as I can before it hardens. All right, guys, that's a wrap. This shower is finished and it turned out great. Hopefully I've inspired you guys to take on your own shower reno and shown you the basic techniques you need to get the job done right. I know I probably saved like one to two thousand dollars doing this myself. Hopefully you can too. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, please like the video, and see you next time.